So the first step to building the balloon arch without using helium balloons and without using a stand is we need something that's going to weigh down the ends where we're going to attach the fishing line. So what I'm doing is I'm just filling a Ziploc bag with some sand from an old pool filter. So I'm, that's what I'm going with. You could also fill a balloon with sand. I'm just filling the Ziploc bag just because it's easier to get it into the Ziploc bag. But whatever you do, you want to have something that's fairly heavy but isn't going to pop the balloons. Like a cinder block might work, but it would also be more likely to pop the balloons. So I'm just going to fill these gallon size zip bags with sand and then I'll double bag them and these will act as my weights. Once you've figured out what you're using for weight, you want to begin inflating your balloons. I'm using these ones that I got off of Amazon by Party Outlets. I'll put a link in the description below. So you can use an air compressor or if you don't have one handy, you can always use a hand pump, but the air compressor is going to make things go so much faster. All right, so as you can see, I've got most of my balloons blown up. Again, when you blow them up, you wanna make sure you leave a bit of a tail on there. That's gonna make this method work a lot better since we're not doing any kind of a frame. So the biggest thing with this method is you're going to want fishing line. I have a just normal thing of fish line here. It's probably some fancy something, whatever, that's supposed to do something for my dad, but you just need fishing line. Any kind should do. You don't want anything that's gonna give too much stretch. Uh, the fishing line normally doesn't really stretch, so that makes it good for this. You're also, as I mentioned earlier, going to need some weight. So what I have here is my gallon size Ziploc bag filled with sand and the sand's a little damp because of where I got it from, so that makes it extra heavy. So what we want to start by doing is fastening one end of our fishing line to the weight, to the sandbag. The downside of using this method versus using a frame or using helium balloons is once we fasten the one end on here, we're gonna have to unroll our whole length. So just keep that in mind um, as you go further on this project. So the first thing I need to do is I need to fasten my fishing line to the sandbag. So to do this, I'm going to come from underneath it. So my fishing line's running this way. And I'm going to bring them both up and I'm going to twist them around each other. So I'm just gonna take this one coming from this end and bring it to this front side and bring this to the back side. Flip the whole thing over. And then tie a knot on this side. It's kind of like if you've ever wrapped ribbon around a present, it's the same kind of idea. So I'm just gonna tie this nice and securely the center of my weight. So this is what I have now where I have this one string coming out the top. It's a little hard to see, but basically I've got a string coming out from the center of my weight. So now this is the part I was talking about where however long our balloon arch is going to be, that's how much length we need to leave attached to this tail end here. So I'm pretty much gonna unroll this long thing, uh, fishing line a whole bunch to get it about my length. So that is the downside. You're gonna have to string them pretty far down the string but just unroll and make sure you leave enough length for the length of your balloon arch. All right, so now I've got my end of my fishing line here and way at the other end is attached my sandbag that we just rigged up. So next thing I'm going to need is just a basic sewing needle. I have this nice one with a large eye so I can fit the fishing line through it. So I'm going to thread my needle and then here comes the fun and easier part because blowing up the balloons takes forever. I'm going to pick how many balloons I'm going to have for each ring of my balloons. So I'm going to do five and I'll show you the pattern I'm doing. So I'm going to get my five balloons and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my five balloons and string them onto the fishing line using the needle. So I'm going to go through this tail piece here and just send my needle right through it. So you can see I've got it running through it just like that and I'm just going to slide it down my fishing line and now I have my balloon on my fishing line here and I'm just gonna slide it all the way down to the end. Now the reason I do it five at a time is because that helps us make the shape that we want and can give us the spirals and things. So I'm going to slide my five on here, string them and slide them all the way down to the sandbag and I'll show you what I do next. So I've slid my balloons mostly down to the end and I've got my sandbag right here. So what I want to do is I want to create my first ring. Now you might notice I didn't really pay attention to what color order I went and that's because these balloons, since they're just on the string, I can rotate them around the string to be in whatever order I want. So I'm going to do this pattern where it'll be like green, orange, blue, green, orange. So I'm just gonna rotate my balloons around. Basically what I want to do is I want to slide these down so that all these tail ends are as close to each other as possible. So I'm gonna kind of just keep sliding them down, arrange them in the order they need to go just by spinning them around the line here. Also it helps if you have 
another pair of hands to help you out. All right, so because of the size of these balloons, they're a little different than some of the ones I was using the other day, I'm just going to do rings of four. So I'm going to do like an orange on every other side and then blue and green. And so the trick is I just want to slide these tail ends of the balloons as close to each other as possible. So just for another angle here, basically what I'm doing is I'm holding some tension on the fishing line and sliding these tail ends together just like that. And it's going to be the tension in the fishing line and having those tail ends so close together that's going to create the stability for this arch. So I'm going to get my next four, so I'm going to have the same colors again, and I'm going to feed these onto here and slide these down, and I'll show you how I arrange them once I slide them down. All right, so here we go. I've got my next four on the string here. So I'm going to, once more, going to slide the ties of the balloons, those tails, slide them as close as I can together on the line. I'm also going to, you know, have that same pattern. Now I want mine to spiral around, so as I slide this cluster of four down, I'm going to arrange it so that way they nestle in between the colors I already have there. So the trick is to push the tail down as far as you can on each of the balloons because that's going to add that um, tension to build the support into the balloon arch. And just keep adjusting it until they kind of nestle into each other and that every other and fill in the gap. So the trick for this, again, it's that tension. So slide the ties of the balloon down. And also another tip that will help with this is if your balloons are the same size, some of them are a little bit varying in size, so that's why they don't always nestle together right away. But you can play around with it, play around with how far down you slide them, and they'll start to nestle together like this. And then just keep sliding them down. And the reason I slide them in units of four is so I can keep track of my pattern, and also it's a lot easier to slide only four of them down the string at a time versus sliding a whole bunch down the string at once. So again, I'm just coming from the top, and really pushing those ties down as far as I can, as close together for each round. It helps also if you have someone to hold tension on here when you walk away from it. So when I walk away from it, it's going to want to do this, but just slide that top back together and keep adding on more and more layers of balloons. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our balloon arch here. So we're gonna see as far as height-wise goes because we're running out of fishing line, so we'll, we're gonna see if we need to attach more, but we're gonna, just gonna see how big it is of what we've got so far. So there. fortunately, we have enough fishing line. Now, as you can see, if Emily and I let go of it here, it's not super sturdy, right? If you have a wall like this, you can kind of prop it up. So because we're doing the fish line method, the two options I have are, I can leave it as is and just add some support. So you can either put like a command hook on the wall and just run fishing line ties to that, put a command hook on the ceiling, something like that. That's what we're gonna go with. Another thing you can do to make it sturdier is go row by row and push all the layers down even more because that's just going to create more tension to help support it. But realistically speaking, you're probably going to need some extra support with this method if you're going a side that's big enough to walk underneath. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna rig up some supports here and then our balloon arch will be ready. Okay, so y'all can't see me, I'm off screen, but we're going to start standing this up somewhat. I went ahead and slid all the rows of balloons down to create that extra tension. But because of when it bends, the balloons tend to shift and just change how the tension is, I'm going to have my helpers kind of stand it up in the curve it's going to be as I bring my end closer. We're going to lay it down anyways again, but that's just to kind of get the balloons already nestled in for the proper curve that we're going. So what I need to do now is I need to tie this end to my second weight. This is very important because the closer I can get it, the more tension it's going to leave in here because if I have it way down here and have this much string between the end of the arch and the weight, all the balloons are gonna slide this way and it's going to create less tension 
and make the balloon arch weaker. So basically what I'm trying to say, get across, is I want to tie my weight as close to my balloons as possible. So I'm just gonna kind of put this here. As you can tell, this is like a really precise professional endeavor. <laughs> You can already see that just from the weight and the tension, it's kind of helping hold the section of balloons up a little bit. And then we're gonna need to stand this whole thing up. As I already mentioned, we're gonna do some more supports on this, but I'm just curious just like how stable, how wobbly it is without doing anything. So we've kind of jostled the balloons around to get them kind of really stacked on top of each other at the bottom and kind of gotten the curvy one. So I'm gonna let go. We're just gonna see what this does. I'm wondering if it'll stay like at all. Look at that. Okay, so we're going to definitely need some more supports because I feel like if I were like bump it, the whole thing's gonna go like that. But as you can see, this kind of gives you an idea of just how sturdy or flimsy this might be. Obviously, if we did a smaller arch, we wouldn't need as much support and stuff. We're probably just gonna do one in the middle. That should be good. But hopefully you can kind of see how this will work and what's gonna give it enough support and all that so you can kind of decide, I don't know, I'm I don't know what my point is. Anyways, here's just so you can kind of see some different things about this balloon arch method. So we walked into this beautifulness. Alright, so as you can see, our balloon arch needs a little bit of help. We left it last night because we ran out of fishing line and just because, you know, it was getting pretty late so we needed to get home. So today we're going to need to get it actually secured up so it doesn't fall over like this and people can actually walk underneath it. So the basic idea is I've got some extra fishing line here. You probably can't see it, but anyways, I'm holding it in my hands and there's the ceiling tiles. I'm going to run it, hopefully, between like the supports for the ceiling tiles. And this is not tall enough, so I'm going to need a ladder. Okay, now that I've got my ladder, I'm going to look up here and hopefully be able to run it underneath the ceiling beams between these tiles. I'll see if I can get this strung up, and if I get it to work, I'll show you what I'm doing. So here's a look where I'm at. I have these ceiling tiles above me, and I found the center one. So ceiling tiles, you know, they lift up, but the problem is I can lift up from both sides, but if you look under there, this slat right here has a piece that goes straight up, so I can't just run a needle through that. But then I was feeling, and I found that spot where I just went ahead and threaded my fishing line with the needle, and I'm gonna be able to run it right through that hole there. So I'm gonna get that threaded through there. Here's kind of an idea what I'm doing. I've got the needle going behind that through that little spot there, and I'm just gonna feed the fishing line through. I've got the fishing line attached to the ceiling, and now I'll be able to use this to make a support for the top of my balloon arch. So now we're going to need to do two kind of side supports. We're going to do a similar method where we go in the ceiling again. But as you can see, you can definitely make a balloon arch without using helium or a sand. But there's some more challenges that come along with it. So you just got to get smart with how you do supports. Another option is if you don't have ceiling tiles, you could run your fishing line supports to command hooks and put those on the wall. Also, it really helps that we're doing this in something that's already an archway because then we have spots that we can kind of prop it up against and give it extra support. So just you want to think those things through when you're making your fishing line no helium balloon arch. We found a nail on this wall where a plot hangs up. So we're going to try running the support to there. So my assistant's going to pull on that back and kind of test out if that the support there is going to help hold it up. To do these next two supports, I'm going to use the ceiling again, but I don't have a good spot to run it through. So I'm just going to bend my paper clips out like this, so that way this leftmost one, you can kind of see how I've got that hook there, and I'm just going to slide that into the ceiling, like underneath the ceiling tiles. So we're just going to slide that right up there, like that. So that's our first side support, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So here's the balloon 
merch that I have created. As you can tell, it looks a little bit different than it did last night when we just left it sitting up. But as the day goes on, as time goes on, balloons pop. We had some pop in here. You might notice the spiral's a little off. It's a big hole right there where a balloon should have been. So it's gonna lose support as it goes on. And also, you're not gonna get as smooth of an arch with this method, especially if you go bigger. So because we're going big enough for this hallway that you can walk underneath, it's gonna be a lot harder to get that nice, beautiful arch like you would if you were using either helium balloons or if you were using a frame. But I think this is still pretty cool. And definitely, you know, it should take some work and some time, but it's definitely not impossible to do. And even though it's not a perfect arch, it still looks super cool. Also, if you go smaller scale with your balloon arch, like I had that one that was rainbow colored that I used as part of my backdrop behind me for filming in a couple previous videos. If you do something on a small scale like that, you don't even need to worry about adding these supports and things because just the weight at the end and the tension and the fishing line itself are enough to help hold it upright and give it a nice curve. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and I just got to cut some of my tail ends of fishing line here so that way no one's jumping up and messing with it. But this is how you can make a balloon arch without using helium and without using a balloon frame. So this is the balloon arch for the typical family. Thanks for watching guys and happy crafting.